Hello, welcome back to another episode of Extractions in Iron. And do you know what's annoying? The air. <laughs> the air has a lot of oxygen in it. And oxygen is great and all because, you know, we can breathe and, and live, which is, you know, fine. But uh, it does ruin a lot of uh, reactions because it is very reactive. There's a lot of materials, you know, obviously you've got like your lithium and, and your sodium and that sort of stuff, the reactive metals, where you can't handle them out in the air for very long because they, they quickly react with the oxygen in the air. And, and more than just the oxygen, uh, obviously, you can tell it's been Training and I obviously don't work in a, uh, a climate controlled lab so I have no uh, control over the humidity in there so on days like today where it's just genuinely raining um, <laughs> the humidity is very high a lot of substances that are reactive with oxygen are obviously very reactive with water in the air as well and, and perhaps even more so you know like once again your lithium and your sodium are very reactive to to moisture in the air so it'd be really nice to be able to do that sort of chemistry without having <laughs> um, so much oxygen around I saw a video on making a, a homemade glove box by Mr. Home Scientists, I mean, years ago now. I, I, I remember it. I, I'm going to say a couple of months ago, but I, I'm fairly sure it was a couple of years ago at this point. And I've been wanting to make my own ever since then. Two things to consider though, um, and if you've been watching the channel long enough, you know that the first one is that I, I generally suck at building things. My engineering isn't really my strength. So you can already tell that this project is going to use too much bloody tape than uh, <laughs> than, than it should. But uh, the other issue was when watching Mr. Home Science's video, I, I didn't really enjoy the fact that it was all a plastic setup. While plastic is, is easy you know, to sort of to, to build with initially, I think it sort of limits you in what you can do, especially if your substances are very um, prone to catching on fire. You don't want to do it in a plastic plastic setup and, and it's hard to sort of make it a, a strong sort of enclosure. So anyway, we're going to get to unboxing this box. All right, here we are. This is what's known as a sandblasting cabinet. And uh, as you can see, it looks very much like a glove box in a sense. This sort of sealed container with these thick rubber gloves. And the idea is that you have uh, your sand and compressed air getting blown in through here. There's a little gun that connects up in there. And then you're blasting the sand um, to, you know, strip things of paint and that sort of thing. So it's meant to be sealed because that, that sand, you know, is is uh, not meant to be breathed, it's not meant to be hitting people, it's very abrasive. It's sealed in a sense that um, it's like physically sealed, it's not really chemically sealed. Uh, we're gonna have to do some um, small changes around here to make sure it actually can be sealed with a gas. But uh, it's a very good starting point and, and um, it wasn't cheap. I mean, it was 200 Australian, so what, 150 US, for uh, those playing at home in America. So I wouldn't call this a cheap DIY solution, but um, it, it's uh, affordable, I guess. I'm spending too much money on chemistry projects, I know. Um, a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have spent $200 on a chemistry project like this. The advantage is the fact that it's, that it's metal. This is acrylic, but um, this is all metal. So um, when we have stuff, you know, holes and stuff to patch up, or any gaps, we can weld it, we can um, do some sort of stuff to it, and, and if we want to put, put holes through, we can drill holes very easily, um, good holes that, that can seal well, which I think makes it makes it better than plastic, and um, really we can do a lot of chemistry here that uh, could catch fire <laughs> um, in small amounts, you know what I mean, but like it's not going to burn through this steel, is what I'm going to say, you know, this acrylic's a bit of a worry, but it's not like a big plastic container where if we have a, a lump of lithium catching fire, it'll, it'll breach the side of the wall. So let's just get rid of all this plastic and let's have a look and see what holes are there, what we need to do to uh, get it turned into an inner atmosphere box. All right, so this part of the hose, the gun thing, connects up to that hole, which um, is a port here. I reckon we use this. I'm not sure what's quite going on here. Um, uh, I don't actually know how sandblasting works terribly well, so I'm just going to take, uh, take this gun off and um, we'll leave that hose here just patch up this hole so um all right i'm not going to film me using a screwdriver because last time i did that i got lots of comments that it was unsafe usage of a screwdriver so bloody screw <laughs> that bit came off pretty easily and and we've got this uh circular bit here with some screws so we can we can clamp something to to cover up that hole this one's a little bit more difficult they've got this sort of covering here which has a reasonably big hole behind it and I'm not sure what's up with this. These aren't screws or anything so I don't know. We'll have to think about that. And then the other obvious hole 
is uh, right down the bottom here. So we've got this mesh that sort of sits over the top here, but um, we've got this drainage hole at the bottom. I suppose we can cover with something. I'm not sure about, um, you know, between here and here. Um, they're not going to be big gaps, but I'm um, going to use argon for this. Um, so, so we want the bottom to be sealed because argon's on a heavier gas. So the stuff at the bottom, we, we really want um, to be leak proof. The gloves are um, pretty thick material. Uh, they got all the sand in there, so obviously to improve grip. So that's that's good there. On there, pretty well. I mean, better than I could ever do that. That's just a big sort of... Uh, what's it called? Hose clamp on there, which we can tie up, but also allows us to, to change over the gloves in future. So if we do get a hole in them or they, they start to degrade or anything like that, or maybe they don't even form a good seal as they are now, I'm not sure, because I'm not sure if they're going to be rated for actually holding in a gas rather than sand. So that gives us an option to change over the gloves so I can just buy some nice gloves and, and change them out when we need them. Feels a little clumsy. Uh, they're pretty thick. I don't have very much fine motor movement. But, um, hey, we'll make it work, I think. This is a brand new purchase as well. I've finally got an argon cylinder. I've hinted at myself getting one for, for years now, I think. I ended up getting an oxygen cylinder instead a little while back. But um, we now have argon. I didn't get one of the big cylinders. I just got a smaller one, just to see how we go. Once again, I'm not sure how affordable this is. This cylinder was $99 plus $200 deposit with the cylinder, but that's fine. And so $99 gives us 2.1 cubic meters of gas, which is 2,100 liters of argon. This is a 90 litre container, so technically we can fill this container up with this like at least 20 times, what is that, 23 or something. Obviously, you know, you don't just perfectly fill it up each time, you know, we're gonna have to do a lot of, um, you know, flushing and that sort of thing, but even if we get 10 times out of there, out of this cylinder, you know, it's sort of $10 a use. It's not dirt cheap, but I'd say it's affordable to do some inaccessible chemistry, you know, that we couldn't otherwise do. I mean, I can always get the bigger cylinder, at least it's easier to store this cylinder because um, I gotta work out a better way of storing large cylinders because uh, I don't want them falling over and turning into a rocket at all. All right, we also got to talk about this lid. This lid has some expanding foam here, which is okay-ish. And then it sits down here, and then you turn these, and it clamps it down. Okay, kind of. It's not too bad. And it, 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 we kind of get away with it because it's right at the top. Our argon is filtering down the bottom, and we're obviously be doing chemistry of the stuff down the bottom. So even if we have some leaks here, the argon is kind of going out. We would just maintain a constant flow of argon. So it's nice and uh, inert down the bottom, and then a bit leaky at the top. But um, I mean, we'll try and get it a bit better than it is currently. One thing it doesn't really allow us to do is um, nice sample changeover, like if we want to get the box down to a nice argon atmosphere and then I remember, oh, I need a pair of tongs or something in there. We have to open this lid currently to get to the sample stuff. So we ruin the whole atmosphere. There's not some nice sort of chamber where I can put something into a little airlock and then then uh, get that out of the airlock. Like we're gonna ruin the atmosphere whenever we do a different sample or, or, or change our minds or if we forget to bring something in. I got my regulator on the argon tied up to that wall so it's not gonna fall off and become a missile. Um, I don't know where the chain and shackles are at the moment, I can't find them, so I use rope, which is shit, but um, it'll do. Mm, the tubing is shit. Um, I need to replace that with some metal tubing, uh, unless there's some weird fitting stuff, like if that's a different thread to this, because this is made for air and that's argon, I don't know if they'll be cross-threaded to each other. I've um just taped over the holes. I, I brought red tape specifically so it wouldn't look so bad. <laughs> um, these holes are pretty big, but uh, you know what? It's actually not too bad a seal, I think, for the moment. Let's just put some argon in here. I'm just excited to see if we can hear it sort of hiss out anywhere obvious. So it's quite a high flow rate, but um, it is building up pressure in the box here. You can, you can see that it's pushing the lid up here. You can hear that gas escaping when I Take the lid off, but I can feel quite a bit of gas coming out these sides here, just along this rim. Um, so that's the main escape point. Yeah, you can hear it too, there. So as we expected, this uh, this is sort of the main escape point. There's a little bit potentially coming out from down here, just this joint. Um, that's that can be fixed pretty easily. So can this. I don't think there's really anything coming out the gloves. Can't feel anything coming through the gloves or anything like that. We could run the box like this all the time, you know, at this high flow rate with the Archon just absolutely pissing out of here. But um, but we don't really want to do that because <laughs> that'll use up all our Argon. Whoop. Why do you want to do that either? All right, let's turn that off. Unbolted this lid from uh, from the top here. So this bit fits here. Ah, 
bit here on the hinges obviously and then and then uh, this bit fits underneath it so I'm just going to replace this foam here with this this uh, thicker foam should make a tighter seal because um, we're still pressing it down to the same height but um, this foam's a lot stiffer so hopefully um, it makes a difference <laughs> so I spent far too long pulling that old foam off and putting the new foam on and as usual it's such a shitty job man I'm fucking suck at arts and craft. I did run out of hot glue, so that's my excuse for doing it so badly. It'll be fine, I think. Maybe I've ruined it. Maybe this foam will be worse than the other foam and I've ruined everything. Anyway, this cover goes on there, so it should cover up mostly uh, ugly sin of a hot glue job. I might just redo the screws up now and, and everything like that. It was annoying because these uh, screws screw into a washer here, but that washer is held by the foam. So when I took the foam off, the washers all came off, so I had to glue the washes into the foam so that the screws still work but ah anyway hey <sighs> all right i'm gonna have to trim down this foam a little but um might be okay just a little bit of trimming i gotta say these hinges aren't aren't a fan of this new uh foam but um you know it does kind of sit like this but you can now force it down force this across here push it down force it across I reckon that's a much better seal than it was before. Looks real solid, yeah. Pretty damn happy with that. So I've got this locked down and I've just run some tape over, over these uh, joints here. Not trying too hard, but just uh, sealing it up a little bit more. And now when we uh, put our hands in, we sort of retract or retract the gloves. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear that too well on camera, but the box is kind of wheezing a little. <laughs> so it's still letting air in and out but we can tell that it's only getting released in and out with difficulty because as I'm moving around um, the box here, I'm sort of drawing in air and drawing it out, which is a really good sign that the gloves aren't, aren't leaking and there's no other leaks because I kind of hear that it's coming out along these sides here. And that's where, really where, if we want any gaps, we want them to be at the top here. So, so that's, that's kind of good. I'll, I'll see if you can hear this wheezing noise. Hold on. You can see the whole top of the box flexing as well. So it is really getting quite sealed, I think. I put a sheet of acrylic over here, so I just uh, drilled three holes into a piece of an acrylic so I can put those uh, screws through and bolt them in. And I'm pointing this out because I used a power tool and I didn't fuck everything up and it doesn't look that bad. So um, it's still just the tape on this side, but now that's a solid bit of a acrylic, which we can take off with those screws there, but, but that effectively seals that hole. So we've just got this hole with the tape over it and this hole, which has got that guard on there but that hole is just tape as well. I, I did run some hot glue along here because I was a little worried about a gap here. So I reckon it's time to test it out a little. I've got some potassium here and let's just uh, run some argon into the box. Compare how quickly a clean surface will um, will crust over while, while in the box. Uh, compared to outside, it's, it's like raining out here <laughs> currently. So it's uh, not the ideal um, environment for potassium out in the open at the moment now. So it will um, lose its shine very, very quickly out here. So hopefully, at the very least, this box will be nice and dry dry air with the argon and um, hopefully um, limited oxygen so we should be able to keep the shine on that potassium for, for a long while. Let's get everything into the box and see how clumsy I am with the gloves too and also how on earth am I going to film inside this box? That's another good question. Hmm. Beautiful. So I've got my camera sort of awkwardly placed in there. Um, a lump of potassium, a knife. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to operate those uh, those forceps there. Um, all right, let's get the argon attached and, and see how we go. I had the argon flow up quite high, but I, I've turned it down now a little bit. I can still feel it coming out just from here. Uh, the box seems pretty pressurized. It's just kind of leaking out of these joints. It's a bit of an awkward setup in there. I, I really think I need a flow rate monitor. Well, I mean, and much better tubing than this shit, but um, a flow rate monitor would be really good to say how much argon am I, am I leaking into the box and and um, then I can kind of over time work out what's the optimal. All right, so let's clumsily get the lid of this jar and um, cut into a bit of potassium.
it's been a couple of minutes. That piece of potassium is, is nice and shiny still. I'll zoom in. It's, it's looking pretty good. Sorry the filming is, is terrible. I don't know if that camera is even recording right now. I think I need something like a, a different camera that has a really wide wide lens, like, like a GoPro, like the classic GoPro that I can kind of mount in the corner that maybe even remotely streams to my phone so I can check the video footage because um, putting that camera in there is, <laughs> is a complete nuisance and it, it feels like it's in harm's way because if that potassium catches fire, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be able to save that camera in time. It's filming through this box is always going to give us some weird glare because it's plastic. Mm -hmm. New camera, bit of an expense, but that's all right. <laughs> We're just spending money on this project. I love this though. How fucking cool is this? I, I fucking love this. It's, it's very clumsy with those thick gloves. <laughs> but uh, yeah, nah, nah, really, really excited about what I can do with this. Okay, we're back out in the open here where I can see if the camera is actually recording and if it actually has battery, which um, it does now. You can see that bit of um, potassium was in the box for, for about 10 minutes and it's still got some shine underneath it. It's obviously protected under the oil now we've got it back out in the open here, but if we open this back up, grab our little friend out here. Like I said, the humidity is about 100%, so we're not expecting things to, the potassium to actually last out here. All right, that's about all I have for you today. I'm really looking forward to talking to you all in the comments, reading your suggestions on what um, we should do with this next. What upgrades would you suggest we do? What experiments you think we could do in it? Can we improve this much better or is this good enough? The best we're gonna get, so we should just move on to experiments or, or should we try and really, you know, soup this up and I can put a vacuum line in or, or you know, make it air really tight or something. I I don't know. See, I'm 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 looking forward to your suggestions. Might get rid of this warning sticker. <laughs> paint some flames on it or something. You know, you know, a sick paint job. No. Um, but yes. <laughs> Fuck knows. All right. Um, I'll see you in the next video.